Hello. So um, my name is Ben Doucette, and I'm a public relations student at Salem State. And I'm also interning at Bread of Life. And I have the honor of being able to speak with three board members from Bread of Life this evening. And before I get started, I would just like to um, let you know about Bread of Life. Bread of Life is a nonprofit organization that has been around since 1980. It's a major food pantry for Malden and adjacent communities, about 10 from North Reading to Everett, from Winchester to Wakefield, all helping people and serving the areas and feeding people. And here I have Dennis Roach and Jaina Jimenez and Bernadette Mutebi, uh, three board members who I would like to speak to tonight. So how are you all doing? Wonderful. Doing great. Having a good day. Awesome. So in the order of Jaina, Bernadette and Dennis, I would like to uh, ask each of you to sort of tell us a little bit about your involvement in Bread of Life and how long you've been involved in Bread of Life. I am so glad you asked that question because I have a story that makes me really happy. Um, I'm involved in Bread of Life first and foremost because of Dennis. Uh, he and I go to the same church and I started hearing about Bread of Life at church. And the first time I went there, um, six, seven years ago now at Thanksgiving to cut up turkeys the night before Thanksgiving to be ready for the dinner. And my mom was visiting and my daughter at that point was eight. Um, so the three of us were cutting up turkeys together and one of my now colleagues in the board took a picture of the three of us, three generations volunteering for Bread of Life. Uh, and I was hooked at that point. I started getting to know people. I started volunteering more. Um, my mom uh, who lived in another state was always asking me about Bread of Life because she felt the connection. My daughter always wanted to volunteer because she had been with her mom and her grandmother. My husband started going. Uh, and just got more and more involved over the years and now um, joined the board just this past summer. Um, and I'm thrilled to be a small part of it and I learn new things about Bread of Life every day. And I'm inspired by these two people on this interview with me. Awesome. And uh, Bernadette, what about you? Uh, how did you get involved? Well, like, at first I was just helping out a woman who was living on her own. And she um, she would always ask me to help her get food. And, you know, she'd even talked about um, how she, I could be able to get this food at Bread of Life. And I had been wanting to find different places for me to volunteer. So the more I always went and helped this woman to get like the food that she had asked of me, since she was like a regular client, but she could no longer go to it because of her age. And I would be the one to give, bring to her those donations. Then the more I started seeing how nice this, um, how nice Bread of Life is, and the more pretty much strengthened me to continue to want to volunteer more and more. And what pretty much got me to even want to stay was that like a lot of things because of my health condition were always taken away from me. I never had the ability to like, you know, watch movies or go out. So I wanted to be the one to go and help out the, like the people who could not be able to help out themselves because I never wanted anybody to go through like any kind of pain I was put into. So that's what got me to continue to, you know, volunteer at Bread of Life. And then and when I got, and that was actually even in 2009. So because I just ended up then getting nominated as a board of director member, because they have never seen a young person like me <laughs> volunteer for so long would always be asking me, what are you doing? How come you're not going out to watch movies or going out to the club or all these kinds of things? It's like, why do you seem like you care so much? It's like, because these are the things I wanted to do. So because they had seen my hard work from 2009 up until like, you know, now, and even the time they had nominated me, I believe that was last year. 
That's what then really strengthened me to really take this great opportunity and be part of, you know, board of directors. And I loved it so much. So I thought it was going to be hard, but turns out it really got me to learn about deep, like um, more and more things about, you know, bread of life and what they're involved in and how I can even help out. Not in just volunteering, like um, physically, but even financially and other things too. So that's how I got involved. <laughs> Awesome, wonderful. And uh, Dennis? Well, I, I got involved with the Bread of Life through my church, the First United Methodist Church in Melrose. Uh, we were we had our feeding ministry, and it was run by a, a, uh, a lady. Her name was Kelly. Jaina, help me out, please. Jaina, um, Kelly uh, Illibodi. Yes. Anyway, so um, so Kelly got me involved, and so I went one night to the feeding. And I saw the people in line and I, I was in the background that night. I remember it very distinctly. I, I was in the background. I was scooping mashed potatoes onto plates and handing them to the next person and observing. And the more I saw, the, I, I can't, I almost can't describe this, the feeling I had that night when I get home, it was almost euphoric. Um, it, it was just such a feeling. And I was hooked. I, 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 that was it. Um, and then I started learning more and more about what the Bread of Life does. Uh, you know, a million meals every single year. Uh, the two emergency food shelters, uh, the, the feeding the teens, seniors at risk, the, the, the food delivery to people living in the motels. And I'm thinking, how can I not get involved? I mean, this, this is... Um, this is an organization. I just, I belong here. And, uh, and so it was shortly after that, that, uh, that I spoke to at that time, Tom Bagley, and uh, I got involved with the board of directors some eight, eight plus years ago. I might, might be nine or 10 actually. Um, and then uh, as things progressed to the church, I eventually started uh, taking over the program at the church. And, uh, and it's, we have a, a wonderful crew. Um, and, uh, we just enjoy doing it. And I, there, there isn't a thing about the bread of life that I don't enjoy. So, I mean, it's, uh, I, I my only regret with, 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 uh, my involvement now is I just don't have enough time to, to do the things I really want to do. My dream is to just retire and work at the bread of life to volunteer. That's what I want to do. So. That's great. It's great. And, uh, and so for so anyone, for any um, this could, uh, be a question if any of you could answer. What's something you feel people don't know about Bread of Life or something people should know, something you want people to know about Bread of Life? I would say this is something I didn't know myself. Bread of Life does so much with so little. Um, the facilities are small. There's food coming in and out. There's the amount of people served to people doing the serving is astonishing to me. And the fact that that's doubled, quadrupled in some cases during COVID, the amount of additional programs with just teams, small teams of dedicated volunteers and very small facilities, it's, it's miraculous. And I think it's just every day a leap of faith that we're going to have enough food for everyone and we're going to be able to serve the needs of everyone. And it, it's really miraculous to me, the way the bread of life is able to serve everyone that needs our help. We just, there it, it's, I wouldn't say magic, but it's like rabbits out of hats. It, it just, it happens. And I think it's sheer will and dedication. I really do. That's great. That's great. And, um, also, um, what are some ways that uh, you feel that people could get more involved? There are numerous uh, ways that people can get involved. I mean, they don't have to come down to the Bread of Life and serve meals and things of that nature. They can, they can volunteer the time to just simply deliver a few meals a, a day or a week. Uh, it doesn't take, but I, I just warn anybody that wants to get involved, you're going to get hooked. You will get hooked and you will be, we'll reel you in. <laughs> it's a, uh, it, it is, it, uh, um, 
how can I describe it? I, I think Jana came close to calling it a miracle. I mean, it, it, it really is what, what we do with so little, with so few people. We have actually 500 volunteers, last count. But um, there, there's just, it is amazing how many meals can be squeezed out of a dollar bill. So yeah, people can write us checks. I mean, we more than welcome the the the, uh, the financial support. But um, you know, there there are people out there hurting. And as Jana mentioned, during this COVID uh, pandemic, the the needs that the people have been at, at times quadrupled. It's been it's been amazing. And yet the bread of life just keeps keeps on ticking, and they they'll just take care of they'll take care of whoever shows up at the door. It's amazing. And to add on to um, those two questions, the first thing I wanted people to know about Bread of Life though, cause like when it comes to volunteer work, nobody ever really wants to do it. They think it's all boring and everything. But what they don't know is that Bread of Life is open to bringing up brand new ideas. They're not just about like a, or a volunteer organization though. They are all, all also willing to like bring out activities like, you know, um, the walk for bread. They also would um, at times come into like those appreciation where they would show the volunteers how much, how much they've been so thankful for their hard work, but without letting them know, but just surprising them. So all I'm just trying to say is that bread of life, what people may need to know is that like, um, it can really be it's pretty much fun, a fun place to be at. Never always about work, can also be fun. You can get great things. And I could not even believe that I too, because of my hard work, had started the Bread of Life Scholarship were to, to be able to help you know students who are going off to college. So you see how you can be able to help them expand and grow bigger and bigger in ways they can never imagine. And then the second thing, for your for your second question, um, which wait, what was it again? The um, the second question was about how people could uh, get more involved in the bread of life. Okay, yes, and the way people can also get more involved in bread of life, as as um, Dennis answered, like financially too, because now that I'm you know working twenty four seven, I've actually still been able to help them out more like financially. And at the same time, the other ways they can always help out too, donations. So is donating more food too, because that can help out people and help um, pretty much prepare them for these meals though too. And then find out what other, other like things they may end up being in need of help too. That's what I pretty much do. And then whenever I can find other people who are willing to do that, I. I introduce them to Bread of Life, let them know about it, and then they start helping out with it too. It's great. So, Ben, another, another thing that came to mind is how people can help. Uh, Jane, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, a fellow member of our church, uh, David Lucas, uh, sent me a note the other night saying he had a whole case of toothpaste, just a simple thing like that. And he's dropping it off so we can get it down to the people that come down for the evening meals. I mean, these people these people don't have anything. You have to start with that premise and anything that they can use, toiletries, we will gladly take them and we will gladly get them to the people that need them. Yeah, that's great. That's great, yeah. It's, it probably is difficult to like think of, to think of how you can, uh, help but then realize that there are many ways it can be probably seems overwhelming mm -hmm. sometimes but when you think of all the little things just how the smallest things can make the biggest differences i'm sure is one thing i was inspired by is we were asked a few months ago to make little videos of what volunteers can do um and a couple of uh, board members and i uh, took videos delivering groceries but one thing I was inspired by was Bernadette because she took a video of, her, of herself cleaning up at Bread of Life just something it's the smallest things that make such a big difference that really stuck with me because just showing showing that the space there matters that 
it needs to be organized and kept in order for all these miraculous things to happen. It's financial, it's, you know, putting things on the shelves and sweeping the floors and delivering and all of it. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, I want to thank you all um, for doing this interview. Before I give a few uh, closing remarks, I was wondering if uh, any of you had any any things you wanted to add? Yeah, if you don't mind, um, I, I want to go back to the first night I was at the at the dinner, and this was back at St. Paul's when we actually had the people in, and we were they were seated. They were people were seated, and they were eating, and I was in the background that night. And I, I talked with one of the local ministers, um, and he said, "You want to get more out of the out of the feeding ministry? Get out on the floor and talk to the people." And I encourage anybody that goes to the evening meals. Eventually, we will get back to a sit down dinner and get to know the people. Sit down, talk to the people. They, they, there's some amazing stories that these people have, and you realize that any one, we could be any one of those people. It doesn't take much when you when you realize just where these people were and and where they are today, and um, it it really an experience to sit down and, and know know who the people that we're serving because uh, they they appreciate it. And one of the one of the things about homelessness. And this came from, not directly from me, but from one of the, our other board members one time sat and talked with a homeless man on the street. And one of the biggest challenges that homeless people face every single day is loneliness. If you see somebody on the streets, stop and talk to them. Buy them a cup of coffee. It's, it's, it doesn't, won't take you any time at all. But you know something? You're going to make that person day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember at Salem State at the, the dining halls, it would be, you know, you could just see some people, some, see someone sitting and, uh, hey, uh, can I, you make a new friend, you know, you, it's, you can make some real yeah. connections that way. Yeah, and you said evening meals, was that the, uh, for those watching who may not, uh, who may not know, uh, the Bread of Life does uh, evening meals at the First Baptist Church in Malden on uh, the evenings in, uh, on weekdays, is that, the one you were referring to? Yes, yeah, yes. And, and that, as I said, before COVID, we actually, the people would come in and sit down and we would feed them at the table. And and that's that's when it was really, now it unfortunately has, has become just a, we box up the dinners and bring them out to street level and they came, they come and pick. There's no interaction whatsoever now with the people other than say hello and, and goodbye. And it's kind of sad. It, uh, because these people, these people have a lot to offer. Oh, sure, that's um, all. That by itself, I'm sure, is appreciated. Hopefully, soon it can be back to being a more an interactive. Yes. Um, so yeah, I would like to again thank you all um, for doing this, and also there are ways for anyone watching this there are ways to get involved bread of life has about 500 volunteers is that correct, That's correct. and um donations are always appreciated you can go to the website for more information um www.breadoflifemalden.org and we are on several social media platforms facebook instagram linkedin uh, or for any other questions, you can call the development director, Patty Kelly, at 781-820-4749 for more information. And thank you, you three, and thank you, everyone watching. Um, hope you have a nice rest of your day or evening, and take care. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.